Stimulants, so I write, I write a lot of stimulants, and this is gonna be, let me give you the conclusion first. The conclusion is there really isn't any useful medication for stimulant addiction, except for benzodiazepines that will uh, ameliorate some of the withdrawal symptoms that patients have. So that's the conclusion, and if you're happy to have heard that and you leave, I'll, I'll find you at the pool. The other thing about this is, let me just see how many people here treat stimulant abusers. Now keep your hands up. How many people here are worried that the prescriptions they're writing for stimulants may be misused and abused? Right, and that takes up more. So the, the talk is going to uh, dovetail on both of those issues, since I treat a lot of adult ADHD and write a lot of medication prescriptions. This is my disclosure. I work with a number of pharmaceutical companies, consulting companies. Uh, I work with the NFL and Medscape and the WADA, which is the World Anti-Doping Agency. They're responsible for overseeing uh, stimulant therapeutic use exemptions for stimulant medications. The objectives, we're gonna describe the neurobi neurobiologic actions of cocaine and amphetamine drugs update knowledge on novel and existing treatment strategies in order to improve outcomes of these patients. Stimulant abuse, you've just spent the last uh, few hours listening to the abuse of opioids and alcohol and now stimulants. And stimulants is a, is a problem. It's not nearly as big as the opioid crisis and I fear that uh, it's gonna get wrapped up into the opioid crisis. And it's a little different because you don't go through generally the, um, the withdrawal side effects with stimulant medications. But this shows you what the deaths from overdose are from cocaine and methamphetamine, and then it puts it in comparison to heroin and the other narcotics. It's the second most widely abused drugs after cannabis, and everybody knows what the number one stimulant in the world used is? Caffeine, right, exactly. Increased risk. You probably know this, males, people whose family members have SUD, antisocial personality disorder, living with somebody with an SUD or unemployment. The reward system over and over and over. So here's a anatomic diagram. The ventral tegmental area in the midbrain sends its projections up to the nucleus accumbens and then sends its projections up to the frontal cortex, and that's the reward system that we're talking about. So you know that stimulants increase dopamine transmission. They increase serotonin transmission, norepinephrine transmission, glutamate, acetylcholine, and actually what's not on there now that's been recently published is their effects on opioid receptors. They actually have a more diverse impact on neurotransmission than just Take it, put it in your stomach, it goes up your carotid and hangs out at the dopamine receptors that you want it to. And also the experience of methamphetamine is different for different people. So if you have low densities of D2, you get a pleasant reaction to methamphetamine. If you have high density D2s, you get an unpleasant effect. So it's very responsive. Your, your psychological experience is very dependent on dopamine receptor densities. These slides, by the way, I think are um, text dense. And so I think for speakers, we've learned to just highlight what we consider important. And there's a couple of things here. First of all, methamphetamine and amphetamine are two different compounds um, based on a methyl group. But as a result of that, methamphetamine is more neurotoxic than amphetamine and dextroamphetamine and levoamphetamine. You should remember that. The other aspect of this between amphetamine, methamphetamine, and cocaine is that the um, dissociation content, constants are different. That is, when the compound binds to the transporter, the rate at which it gets released from the transporter is different. And also, the influx into the brain of these compounds is somewhat different. And it depends on the route of administration. So it's the route of administration, it's the rate into the brain, it's the attachment to the transporter, and then it's the dissociation off the transporter, all of which contributes to the abuse potential. But the mechanism of action for amphetamines, 
And you want to listen to this carefully because I don't want to be subtle in teaching you the answer to that question. Amphetamines competitively inhibit dopamine reuptake transporter. They increase dopamine-mediated reverse transport uh, of the dopamine, and I'll show you that in a graphic. It binds to VMAT, which is the vesicular monoamine transporter, and also it increases monoamine oxidase uh, inhib inhibition on the um, catabolism of dopamine. The others do very similar things. The other aspect of methamphetamine versus cocaine is that cocaine will give you a euphoria for 20 or 30 minutes, and methamphetamine will give you euphoria for 8 to 12 hours. So again, uh, we put them in a category of stimulants, but, but when you dial it down in regards to the pharmacokinetics profile, uh, they, are, they are different. So just to review, again, you have postsynaptic dopamine 2 receptors, you have the transporter, you have VMAT, which is the enzyme responsible, it's the, the transporter protein responsible for getting cytosolic dopamine into the vesicle. Then the vesicle moves to the postsynaptic, the presynaptic pre um, synapse, and then opens up and releases the dopamine. So this is cocaine. So cocaine binds to the transporter. It eliminates your feedback loop. And you get greater release of dopamine. This is amphetamine. So amphetamine binds to the transporter, gets transported into the cell, into the neuron. It then affects the VMAT, which controls how much dopamine gets into the vesicle. So you have different mechanisms of action in order to increase dopaminergic transmission. And, and because of this, you get subtle differences in both the subjective experience of these stimulants as well as differences in animal models for dopamine measurement. So what happens with chronic stimulant abuse? And chronic would be regular daily dosing over the course of time. And the reason I'm saying that is because if you do intermittent dosing over a long period of time, the outcome is a bit different. So with chronic stimulant uh, use, you get a reduction in the transporter number. You get increased cytosolic dopamine. You get decreased dopamine transmission. And you also get a, a downregulation of postsynaptic dopamine recept uh, receptors. And then you can see this in the, in, the, uh, in the scan. The red areas are the D2 receptor availability. And as you're on these uh, methamphetamine longer and longer, your postsynaptic D2 receptors decrease in numbers. So again, this is one of the answers to the question. And you'll notice recent abstinence versus prolonged abstinence can change your VMAT. Now, all of this is interesting academic discussion, um, but you know, it doesn't really translate into your clinical practice. You, this is all academic and it's all very interesting in order to understand the mechanisms of action, but ultimately you have to sit down with your patient and figure out what's gonna work and what's not gonna work. Let's just say that chronic stimulant use is gonna reduce your dopamine system. And for most people, that's not a good thing, unless you have ADHD. So the side effects of methamphetamine addiction and stimulant addiction are all of these, some of them are direct outcomes of stimulants, some of them are the result of lifestyle choices like homelessness, unemployment, crime, imprisonment. I just point out tachycardia, hyperthermia, and muscle pain. If you don't know that your patient is chronically abusing stimulants, you might think that this ends up being serotonin syndrome. So you have to inquire as to what they are on, because if you just think your patients are taking what you prescribe, uh, you won't realize how many patients are taking things you don't even know about, including over-the-counter drugs that have an impact on the serotonin system. So you do have to query that.